How's it going everyone? In this video I'm going to show you how to use Canva. Canva is a free drag and drop online graphic design tool that is feature packed and super easy to use. By the end of this tutorial you'll be able to create professional looking graphics in no time. Everything I show you in this tutorial can be done in the free version of Canva. So let's get into it. Firstly, sign up to canva.com and on the home page, you will see a range of templates for different types of social media posts and marketing collateral. You can choose any of these pre-made templates or create your own custom sized design. I'll just create a blank design in 1920 by 1080 pixels. This screen is the Canva editor and is where all the magic happens. The first thing I usually do is rename the document by clicking here. I'll rename it how to use Canva. When you click elsewhere, it saves it automatically. One thing to note is that Canva auto saves your design periodically, which is quite handy. You'll see at the top, it says all changes saved to let you know it has done that. Once you've finished your design, you can share it and download it with these buttons at the top. If you want to manually save it, you can click on file, then save. This is your main canvas area where you will create your design. This menu on the left is where you get all the elements for your designs. You can use any of these pre-made templates by just clicking on it. You can then edit the pre-made template or you can make it your own. I'll just create one from scratch. If you click on photos, you can add in a range of stock photos. Some of these are available in a paid pro version. So I usually like to get my photos from Pexels or Pixabay, which are free stock photo sites. Luckily, Canva has a link to these. If you click more, then click Pexels or the Pixabay app. It will then add that app to the tabs on the left. I'll just choose a picture of a laptop. When you click on it, it will be added to the page. You can then resize or crop it with the handles around the blue selection box. Notice that once the image is selected, a new toolbar appears. Here you can add effects, add a filter, adjust image settings, crop or flip. I'll just keep the image the same. Now I'll add some text with the text tab. You can add some standard text here or add in some font combinations. Again, you can adjust the size and move it around the page. Just double click on it to edit it and then you can type it out. Once the text is selected, you'll notice that the toolbar has a different set of options compared to the image toolbar. You can change the font. You can adjust the size. You can change the color. You can make it bold, underline, uppercase or lowercase, left align, center align, right align adjust the letter spacing or add effects. I'll show you how these effects work, but let me first change the font so you can see the effects more clearly. I'm looking for Montserrat Extra Bold. Here we go. I'll just make it slightly bigger. Right, so now let's select the text, then click on effects. Here you can see all the text effects that can be applied. You can adjust the various aspects of the effects with the sliders that appear underneath each one. You have shadow, lift, hollow, splice, echo, glitch, neon and curve. Curve text is the latest addition to these. Here you can change the curve with the slider as you can see it curves upwards or downwards. You can also adjust the letter spacing if it looks too close together. I've only got a few letters here, so it makes it look a bit cramped. But once you adjust the letter spacing, you can have a nicely spaced out curve. Moving on, the position button in the top right allows you to move the selected element around the page. This works for pictures, elements and text. Quick tip, you can also use the arrow keys to move the elements. Pressing the arrow key once moves the element one pixel in any direction. 
shift plus arrow allows you to move it 10 pixels in any direction this is handy if you're trying to fine tune the uh, position of your elements if you want to line up elements perfectly click on file show rulers then click and drag a guideline from the ruler on the top or left to add a guideline to the page you can then line up elements to these lines this is handy if you're trying to line up multiple elements on the page you can remove the lines by clicking and dragging them off the page or deselecting show guides in the file menu The Elements tab is where you can add shapes, icons, symbols, lines, frames and grids. For example, we can add a simple rectangle if we go down to Shapes and click on this shape. We can then drag it over the text and change the colour by clicking the colour box. We can move this shape behind the text by clicking Position and selecting Backwards. This is effectively moving a layer behind the text layer. I'll change the text to white to make it easier to read. So now you have text over a darker background. At the moment we can move these two elements independently of each other. However, we can group them together by highlighting both elements and then clicking group in the top right menu. Now the text and box are one layer that you can move as you wish. Just press ungroup to move them independently again. Another cool element you can try is frames. Frames are essentially placeholders where you can put images or videos inside them. Just drag an image into it then double click the image to adjust the view inside the frame or the size. I'll add an iPhone placeholder frame then go into the photos tab and drag in any photo. This one looks good. As you can see, only a small part is visible in the frame, but you can double click the image and adjust what is shown and you can also change the size. Okay, that looks good. This is useful if you want to create screenshot mockups of a website or app on different devices to show off your business. Right, also in the elements tab, you can add in animated elements like these stickers. Of course, you'll need to download the file as a GIF or MP4 file to retain the animations. If you download as a PNG or JPEG, it will remain a static image. I have done another full tutorial on how to create videos with Canva. You can check that out at the end if you wish. I didn't want to add in too much information here and make the video too long. However, you essentially have the music and videos tabs on the left to add in these features to create a video. As you can see, you can also add in a video to the frame, so that will play inside the iPhone. If you click the scissors at the top, you can select the duration and selection of the video being played. The music tab works in a similar way. Just click on it to add it to the page. The length of the music will automatically match the length of the video or page. Again, check out my more in-depth tutorial on how to create Canva videos. The last thing worth mentioning is the backgrounds tab. Again, very straightforward. Just choose a background and it will override the existing background you had. Once you've finished your design, click download, choose a file type and then just download it. So congratulations, you now know the basics of Canva. If you found this video useful, please help me out and smash the like button and subscribe with notifications to get informed of when my latest videos are released. This would help me out dramatically. I try to make all my videos as direct and straightforward as possible. Also, let me know in the comments what other types of tutorials you would like me to come up with. I know it's getting close to Christmas and I have a few days off of work so I can smash out some more videos. Anyway, I'm off. I'll catch you in the next one.